Hello and welcome back to Olympics Daily. We're back at the Olympic Park and today I'm joined by Ben Fenton. Ben, hi. Um, we are three days into the event and already China are storming ahead in the league table with nine golds already under their belt. But their performance is being marred somewhat by questions being raised over the performance in particular of one of their swimmers. Yeah, that's right. I think in many ways we'll see this as the Chinese Olympics four years late. Uh, they did very well in Beijing, came second in the medals table. I wouldn't be surprised if they come top of the medals table but in the London Games. And they've dominated in areas like the pool uh, in somewhat surprising fashion, gymnastics to diving. It looks like they could even do a clean sweep of the gold medalists there. Uh, but, of course, when you get some of the unexpected successes, you also, in the context of the Olympics, get some questions raised. And as you say, there's been particular question about the performance of Yi Xuen, uh, and in her 400 metres individual medley, particularly, where she smashed the world record by a clear second. And in the last phase of it, the last 50 metres freestyle, she swam actually faster than Ryan Lochte, the gold medal winner in the men's event. Now, that's never happened before, and it's prompted John Leonard, who's the head of the World Swimming Coaches Association, to say that the performance was unbelievable. That's a rather loaded word, and in this context, he was clearly implying that he thought that she had been aided in this by some sort of cheating. And uh, he hasn't actually come out specifically to make that accusation, but he's come as close as he could possibly do. Okay, now, uh, one of the uh, concerns, obviously, that everyone had with uh, hosting the Games in London was infrastructure, the crowds that were expected, but we've actually seen some quite quiet streets around, haven't we? Yes, it's uh, in many ways uh, a sort of very smooth operation because fewer people have turned up. If you were a cynic, you might think that Transport for London, the uh, organisation that runs London's train services, has actually been trying to frighten people off, the ordinary Londoners, trying to get them to stay at home so that it will all ha run smoothly for the Olympics. And it's, if that's their, their policy, it's working, because it's actually been a very smooth ride so far. Yeah, I mean, I was in central London on Saturday evening and it was empty. I mean, much more than I've ever seen before, in fact. And there have been complaints uh, from many of the people who own businesses in central London that rely on the tourist trade, entertainments, the theatres of London are, um, um, have got figures that are way down on what they've had in previous years. So they were hoping for a bonanza and it turns out like they're going to get a, a famine really. Uh, I've similarly seen uh, world famous attractions like the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew where I walked past the car park on a very sunny Saturday uh, and it was 20% full and I'd normally expect it to be packed. Um, what's your tip of the day for today? Tip of the day, well we can see that uh, Team GB is playing its trump card today. It's a dismal, horrid, typical English summer's day. It's raining and the clouds are very deep in the sky and uh, our athletes in the GB team will be feeling much at home and they'll be hoping it puts off the others I think. Okay, today's photo finish is um, South Korean fencer Shin Lam at the semi-finals of the Epe contest yesterday. Um, sitting on the piece, floods of tears, is a painful photograph. Um, this was because uh, at, at the end of the match an extra second was added um, and she was dealt a death blow. She lost the, lost the game but she sat there for over an hour while her coach contested the decision. I think what that tells us really is, is two things about the Olympic Games. One is that if you prepare for something like that and you put your heart and soul in it, it can affect you so terribly when it goes wrong. And the other is that Olympic officials are a bit nervous as a pro of approaching somebody as heavily armed as she is when she's in that kind of mood. Thank you very much, Ben. Um, we will be back tomorrow morning, of course, with further news and analysis from the Games.